I'm back from the 3D Meetup Sweden and man, it was a lot bigger than last year. There was so much to see. I interviewed uh, Torben with his new generation hang printer. I talked to E3D about what they changed on the tool changer, excuse the pun. I talked to Doit who have a new board to show. That's gonna be awesome. And there were so many other little inspiring bits all over the show floor that um, I'm sure you would have liked to see as well. So I'm gonna show you, let's check them out. Now one of the 3D printers that really grabbed my attention is this original Cells Mendel. And about 7 or 8 years ago this was what you built when you wanted a wraprap 3D printer. That was even before the first Prusa Mendel. And I hold the Cells Mendel pretty close to my heart because back when I built my first 3D printer that's what I built. It's a good reminder that so much has changed over the last few years with 3D printing yet so many things have stayed the same. Now, you might question the usefulness of this machine, but it's a take on the hang printer that uses super inexpensive components like these internally geared stepper motors and just sewing thread instead of higher quality fishing line. It's designed to hang underneath a table so that it can be stowed away really easily and supposedly it only costs $29 to make, which I think more than makes up for the questionable design choices and uh, unique print quality. Again, like last year, we found Torbjorn with the hang printer. How's it going this year, man? Thank you. I think it's going well. At least it's still printing. And it did bring a few new improved bits on the machine. It's, it's quite different to what we saw here last year. It's, it's quite similar to what we saw at Trinamic, but some things have still changed. What, what are those? Okay, the, the biggest change is I have added the closed loop on uh, the A, B, and C motors. So you have an encoder, encoder there, so you can know where your motor position is all, at all times. Yeah. So that is uh, a single encoder for every motor. Uh, you're using the Mecarinos. What extra functionality do those give you over something like an Allegro or a Trinamic driver? Uh, right now, there are two main uh, benefits of using them. You can, you can put the motors in uh, torque mode. That's the first benefit. Uh, and, it, and it sets a constant torque on the motor instead of setting a constant position. And that lets you tighten the lines and have a constant tension. So you can drag the, the mover around with your hands and basically just save lots of time when you set up the machine. And that is with traditional NEMA 177 motors, right? That is not any special DC geared... So it, it's literally just the NEMA 17 with the Mecaduino and encoder on there. Yes, exactly. The, the Mechadwinos drive the stepper motors as if they were BLDC motors with lots of poles. So it feels like driving a BLDC motor. Awesome. And you are using that for automatic calibration of this machine. I mean, if you're watching the Trinamic build series we did, how long did we take? Two hours or something? Yeah, we were, yeah, I think two hours. And I was like really satisfied with that calibration because it worked on the first try. And like um, when we used to make Arduinos here to auto -cal calibrate yesterday, it took us seven minutes, I think, the whole calibration. Wow. Okay. So how how does the auto or assisted calibration or whatever you're calling it work roughly? What what's the process like? Okay. So you set the the uh, machine in torque mode. So you drag it around by hand. You you put the the nozzle in home position and you say ready, and then you. You drag the mover around by hand to random positions, as far from the region as you can. So just touching your base plane, basically, right? No, you can take data points wherever, so just you can any, literally anywhere in the in the build volume. Yeah. So it's a two-person operation. <laughs> One person uh, moves the mover around, and the other person hits uh, collect data points. I'm also seeing 
a new effector that is now easier to build, right? Yeah, it's quite a big uh, lighter, uh, a bit lighter, uh, because it's using zip ties. And that's also easier to build than what we what we built in Hamburg. Yeah, I, I still remember the the individual PTG parts just cracking all over the place with screws and stuff. So you, almost no screws on there anymore, just zip ties, right? The the mover is all zip ties everywhere, so that's nice. It's also it can tolerate different widths of uh, beam. So I don't have to specify a beam width anymore. That was a nuisance. Yeah. So you can use whatever is available, imperial, metric sizes, whatever works, right? Yeah, whatever people wants and needs to mount their tools. And you've also mentioned that you now are using the you know box standard Marlin version uh, again instead of your mangled together 2015 fork, right? Yeah, so I've baked in all the hang printer special stuff into the stock Marlin. You can finally have linear advance, uh, several tool heads. Uh. Oh yeah, 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 uh, tool heads. Have you talked to E3D about the, the tool changer on, on this platform? I, I haven't talked to them about it yet, but it's uh, I've thought about it. I hope I get the chance to talk with them before this gets on YouTube, but I will talk to them about it. <laughs> All right, you, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to them right now. Thank you. <laughs> well, 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 fancy seeing you here, Sanjay. What's new? What's going on? Um, I don't know, from two, three weeks ago? Yeah, I, we actually have a surprising amount to show for two to three weeks, I suppose. Yeah. Um, this, this machine sucks. Yeah, literally, um, as I think it will show you in a moment. Um, but yeah, updates on this. I know the, the biggest, flashiest one um, is the, the dump and purge prime area um, where the waste filament gets deposited before we print and start printing and prime their nozzle is linked to a vacuum cleaner. Uh, and the vacuum cleaner is... It's right under the floor here. Can we see that, actually? Yeah, probably. Hiding away. Uh, and the vacuum cleaner is linked up to a solid-state relay. We actually just have a plug on the back of the machine. All UK plugs, I assume? Yes, so we're actually running an adapter so we can use someone's borrowed vacuum for up here. I'm seeing you've got the unicorn. No. What's it called? The unicorn? Tubic tubing? Tubi oh, no, 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 the Capricorn tube. Yeah. No, the uni unicorn right, tubing. Right, right, yeah. yeah, unicorn tears. Does it actually, people have been asking on YouTube, does it actually make a difference? Yeah, yeah, it makes a difference. Small, but measurable and noticeable. Um, All right. Yeah, it, it does work, it does what it says on the tin. Um, slightly trade off is it slightly reduces your tolerance for like outsized bulge on the filament because the hole's smaller inside. Um, but for that, you get a bit more improved responsiveness. Control stiffness, basically. Okay, cool. So, in general, like this platform is. Again, the, the prototype or RC1, release candidate one you've called it, for what you're actually going to be shipping out as a bare bones machine. What's changed on the, on the platform? Um, so we've moved the Z motor to have the back of the Z motor is now attached, backs up against the main XY motion plate. So it just increases perpendicularity, improves repeatability a little bit, because now all of the motors and all the axes attached to a single plate, which is good. Nice. Then, as promised, Z um, has been updated to instead of featuring two parallel 12 millimeter rails that you had to tram and was kind of annoying, um, it's now got a single double wide high wing carriage with some more preload on it. It moves extremely smoothly and in a straight line, and it sucks, as promised. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay, and you've got a new heated bed on here. Is that, is that out for release or announced? No, or Not yet, um, but yeah, they're the codename Mordor in, the, in our sprint pipeline. I mean, I've, I've seen the super early high temp prototypes, but those were somewhat different. Yeah, those were like trunks of like billets of aluminium with heater cartridges and holes in them. And now this is um, it's a silicone heater pad that's um, we actually cure it in contact with the aluminium, so it's like cured onto the instead of being it's not stuck on with like silicone adhesive. If you do high temp, it's not going to be the adhesive that bubbles up and eventually separates it from the aluminium plate. The rigging is gone. Um, the old like there used to be a, a, a mast and oh yeah yeah right rigging. and you've you've now got like a steel flex spring steel sheet in there something yeah 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 spring steel strips in that that get you a nice bend radius curl um, 
still needs a little bit of work on the printed parts that terminate each end. We're just like setting the angles and setting the clamping forces, but we consider the motion portion of the tool changer build done. You keep fine tuning it, but this is basically locked down. Awesome. And I'm still seeing the do it board in there. I don't think you had the extender hooked up last time. Did you? I think yeah. you did. Yeah, it's the only way we get enough IO for right. running four heads. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I think I should go talk to the do it guys next. All right. Yes. Thank you. Nice. And I'll see you. I'll see you next time. Skipping steps. Awesome. <laughs> just to the end. <laughs> All right, David, uh, you're from Do It 3D, obviously. And yeah, we just saw your boards being used on the E3D Tool Changer yes. machine. It's a piece that they're showing off. It certainly um, is, isn't it? What, what has changed and what you're now shipping out as you do it Wi-Fi and Ethernet versus what I still have? Well, um, we originally shipped the Duet Wi-Fi in, I think it was August of 2016. And um, since then, we've made a number of minor improvements, um, mostly aimed at making it harder for people to damage the boards, because um, I hate it when someone actually manages to blow up the board that I was largely responsible for the design of. So we want to make our boards as foolproof as we can. Um, but but that, is, that is coming from a point where the do-it boards are already, like, they're properly engineered, like, they're not that easy to just blow up like well, some other well boards might are, be. But um, we discovered um, with the older duets that um, people sometimes get shorts on the hot end between the hot end heater and the thermistor. Um, and on the original duet boards, that would actually damage the processor. So we wanted to add some protection. So we protected the live side of the thermistor against 24 volts. Um, and we protected the ground side um, with a fuse. And my feeling was maybe that would protect one in a thousand duets that you, one in a thousand, you'd have that short and the fuse would blow. And okay, it's an SMD fuse, it's tricky to replace, but you can replace it, you don't blow up the whole board. Um, and when we actually started shipping Duet Wi-Fi in quantity, we found it's more like one in a hundred users actually short the hot end to the ground side of the thermistor. And then they have to replace the SMD fuse, which, which, which isn't easy. So um, we decided we're going to change that. So we changed that to a resettable fuse. And we also put an extra connection. So if you do get that short, the firmware will tell you, hey, you've got a short between the thermistor ground and this. Go do something about it. Another thing we know people do, we always tell them not to. We say, don't unplug a stepper motor while it's under power. Yeah, it's, it's the same on, on any board, right? It is. That's right. Um, people occasionally still do that. But more to the point, if you have a bad crimp connection, in the uh, the crimp pin that connects the stepper motor cable, you can unintentionally have that effect. So we looked at the output circuitry of the stepper motor and we thought, how can we improve the protection? So again, we put some extra circuitry on the um, uh, the Duet Wi-Fi so that um, it's less likely you'll damage the motor. So what what is what is this? Right, is this, this, this the next big Duet or no, is it a this, side grade? This is another member of the the second generation duet family um, uh, and uh, this board is not officially launched yet it's being launched on monday 23rd of april it's called the duet maestro uh, this is a collaboration between ourselves and the large american oem yeah. and so, so you designed this for them but you of course also making it available to the public we designed it for them um, we did the design um, we test the prototypes did the firmware and for a low-cost board you really need to do assembly in china at least so um, they're handling the complete manufacture of that um, they're handling um, probably most of the sales in the u.s we're handling sales in europe and probably the rest of the world so although this is designed for them we've got some features of our own as well to make it a more general purpose board um, of course it has trinamic drivers you wouldn't use anything else these days but they're lower current trinamic drivers than the ones in the full duet it's a slightly less powerful processor um, and it's a lot less expandable it's five drivers on board possibility of plugging two extra ones in externally uh, but that's the limit whereas the duet wi-fi duet ethernet you can go up to 12 stepper drivers all right so this is going to be 
a low-cost version of the Duet, right? This is going to be a lower-cost version of the Duet. Um, uh, it's looking like this is going to be round about $130 shipped with the connector pack initially. Uh, we're hoping initially, eventually it'll come down below that. Uh, we think there's a, the possibility, but $130 is probably going to be the launch price yeah. for the retail pack. But firmware and processing power and like capabilities of, of this thing are comparable to the full Duet, right? Pretty much the same. The, the only major difference is um, the, the processor in this doesn't have onboard floating point hardware, which the full Duets do. But unless you're running something like a SCARA, um, where you're doing lots of trigonometrical com uh, computations, you probably don't need that. In fact, this will probably run a SCARA quite happily and better than any 8-bit board, board, um, board with anyway. And it's, it's definitely still more than enough for deltas, et cetera, oh, where, yeah, where an 8-bit struggles. Yes, yes. There is going to be a Duet 3. Uh, it isn't imminent. It's, um, we have done quite a lot of the firmware development for it already um, and uh, tested it on some hardware. We have a lot more prototyping to do, so don't expect it until uh, the very end of this year or early next year, but there will be a Duet 3. Um, it's really aimed at higher end systems, um, and the big goal of that is expandability. It's going to be based on using CAN bus to connect sub-modules. So there'll be a basic board with a number of stepper drivers on, and there'll be expansion modules connected by CAN bus. And because it's CAN bus, uh, Whereas with our present duets, if you have the duet and the duet X5 expansion board, they have to be right next to each other, good solid ground connection between them. With this, you will have um, a power cable and an RJ11 CAN cable, and these can be quite long, and you can daisy chain them. So you will have almost unlimited expansion in terms of numbers of stepper drivers. Um, it'll have a more powerful processor as well, more RAM, more flash, faster. So we'll be able to do things like run two GCO streams at once. And increasingly, people are coming to us saying, um, uh, can we have more stepper drivers, please? Can we have more heats? Can we have more fans? Um, E3D with their tool chain, they've maxed out our fans. They're using nine controlled fans, which is the maximum we support at the moment. Wow. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Tom. You.